Hi guys, how are you? Can you see me? Oh, do I look a little bright? Let me know. Let me turn this down because you know this is the first time I'm going on camera. Oh, I gotta look over here, camera. Hold on. Let me turn you down some. I'm trying to get you to where you don't see see my ceiling. Now you can see how ghetto I am. Look how I staple up my uh which way? This way. See how I staple up to my ceiling? Let me know if you can hear me because I'm doing this on my iPad today. So let me know. Uh, I know I'm not in the center right now. I got to figure this out. Can you guys hear me? Hit number one if you can hear me. I'm all up close and personal today. Put a number one if you can hear me. Let me know. Oh, good, 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 good. Um, I got Nala here. Nala, why do I feel like I'm opposite? <laughs> You can't hear well. Okay. Can you hear me well? Let me know because this is new to me on this iPad here. Uh, not, where's Nala? Oh, Nala is down here. But anyway, let me say hi to everybody because I got some gossip for you and some really good, good, good news. So let's see. Let me go back. Oh, Lord, there's, everybody's on here. Thank you. Hi, Lisa, Jenny, Crystal, Anita. Hi, Anna, Samantha. There's my girl, Lori, Nita, Beauty and More, Renee. Hi, JR and Jen. How are you guys? There's my tray. Let me know. Annette, God, all of these guys are here. Thank you so much. Let me get back to the chat because I know I get behind. So let me know how you guys are doing. It is snowing here in Jersey. We got about five inches and it finally stopped. I'm so excited to have you made it to your stream. I'm happy that you're here too. Good, I'm glad you guys hear me well. Hey, boo. Hi, Debbie and Monica. How you guys doing? D does the camera look okay? Because let me tell you. <sighs> When I tried it on my computer the other time, that's why I haven't went live where you can see my face. I looked so bright. So I know, look, 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 would you look at this? I know we're up close and personal, but I, I, I got to figure it out. But at least you can see me. And I don't know why the chat isn't moving. Hi from Texas. Let me know what the weather is where you're at. It is, I could tell you right now, what temperature it is. Let me see. Let me go. Weather. Well, it's 24, but I don't know what the wind... Oh, I can look on this one. Um, why is my chat not moving? It's just staying. I don't know why it's doing that on the iPad. Uh, playing fish land on Timu. What is that? Is that a game? You look nice and crisp. Good, 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 good. I am so happy. I guess I got to keep playing with that because the chat isn't moving. Okay. Uh, let me... I want to see like what the... Okay, it's... 25 but it feels like 17 so it's not too cold like i know some places like negative 25 okay i can't complain um i couldn't chat but it works now good 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 i'm so happy nunya the glasses are so cute these are my uh prescription glasses i finally found them i gotta remember that the camera's over here it's 54 in florida oh you show off oh it's gonna be 19 tomorrow in florida wow um, 16 and snow. Gosh, yeah, it's freezing. Yeah, it's 17 here. Uh, eight. I know. I know. It's so funny. Like different oh, negative one. I would die. I would die. Um, 86. Holy crap. I would love. You know what my perfect weather is? Is like 75, 80. Uh, I'm just gonna wait a few more minutes. And I'm gonna tell you guys the good news. Going to freeze here in Texas tonight. Oh my gosh. Um. You don't know how to change that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what's going on with the stream yard, but I don't know why the chat isn't moving. I got to like do it with my, see, see how I, everything looks backwards over here. I have to do it with my hand. So if I get behind on chat, I apologize. Uh, I got to figure that out. Um, I don't know if it's yours or my internet, but you keep spinning. I have no idea. Let me know. Um, ready to hear your secret. Hi, BTU. Um, okay. I'm getting ready to tell you. 14 feels like one, but below zero. Oh gosh. Um, I wasn't able to chat till I re, oh, okay. You had to restart it. Okay. 
you guys ready for my good news really quickly i dyed my hair and i am a slob so if you see i, got, I, I don't like this backwards thing if you see like stuff around purple that's my hair dye okay because you guys know i'm i'm sloppy <sighs> are you ready for this da -da 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 -da. my divorce is finalized i am officially a single woman i and single and ready to mingle. No, I'm not ready to mingle yet, but my divorce is finalized. It's done, it's over with. I'm so happy. You just don't know I'm so happy. So that is good. Now I won't feel so bad when I see that cute guy at Walmart. <laughs> now I can give him my number. Cause before I told you I wasn't gonna give him my number until I was like divorced, but it is done. It was, you got seven inches of snow. Oh my God. It was like a really easy divorce because um, there was nothing to fight. Like we didn't even have lawyers, you know? It was just, uh, I mean, we didn't even have a shared banking account. So it was just signed papers. Like I had him, I wanted him to file, which he filed because that way he paid filing fees. <laughs> I'm like, he didn't help too much in the marriage. At least he can file a uh, divorce, you know, the, the paperwork. And then that was that, you know, and then we just, it, n n nothing. There's like no alimony, no nothing. I mean, he didn't help for me to claim alimony or anything like that. So it's just, uh, we kind of left what we came into, <laughs> which was nothing, you know, you know, we don't have any biological kids together, which all my kids are grown anyway. So we didn't have to fight about the kids. We didn't have to fight about the house. You know, I own the house. We didn't have to fight about anything, you know? So it's good. Um, you know, I, I, I wish him the best and I just hope he learns from this. And now he's somebody else's problem, not mine. You know what I mean? So yeah, so I am excited. Thank you guys. But like I said, I'm gonna work on myself. I started my, well, I haven't actually went and started boxing because of my blood pressure, but um, you know. I'm going to like, I want to lose some weight and stuff, you know, and like, um, get me together, work on myself. Do you know what I mean? Uh, like my mind, my spirit, everything. Um, I felt like a massive weight was lifted. Yes, I do too. You know what it is? I mean, like he moved on and that's on him, you know, uh, uh no matter if you're married or not, it's still adultery, right? But I couldn't because, you know, I just have fear of God and I, I just didn't want to do it. So now, like, I don't, I don't know. If I see somebody cute, I can give them my number or what have you. You know what I mean? Oh, thank you. Well, we're up close and personal. I just have a little, uh, gosh, I hate this. This is how you could tell my age. This and I'm getting uh, smile lines. But I do have some mascara and stuff on. All right. I'm going to uh, put... I got to figure out how to do this on the iPad, but I'm going to put the link. I know Lisa wants to come up and say hi to you guys. Hi, Christine. How are you? Oh, there's my Tammy. Tammy, are you? I can't. You know what I need to look? Does it show that you're a moderator? Do I have to make you a moderator because I'm doing on the iPod? iPod. iPad? I have no idea. Let me see. I guess I should have be prepared. I get nervous. You know what? Because I don't do go live too often. I get very, very nervous. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I, I don't know why I do that. You know, you guys are my friends. Um, is your blood pressure better? Uh, I mean, I can check it real quick. If you want me to let me know, cause I have a blood pressure machine. We can check it. Hey, Kimberly. Have you checked on the package yet? Have you tracked it? Like, is it close to you or not? Is it close to you or not? What? Is it close to you yet? Oh, thank you, Sharon. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Don't be nervous. You're, I don't know. I always get nervous. I I don't know. I, you know what it is? It's like, first of all, I hate the fact you can see my ceiling. And then because, you know, this is the addict, right? So you, I, how do I fix this mirror? It's like backwards. I don't like the ceiling, how it goes down. I can't even do it right now. <laughs> It's too funny, you know, but whatever. I don't know. I don't know why I get nervous. I just feel like, I don't know. I just do. I worry about your blood pressure because it was so high. I think a lot of had to do with stress. And also I just got back my insurance. Remember 
when I didn't have the health insurance. And, uh, you know, I got, so, I mean, I was taking medicine, but I wasn't taking like how I was supposed to because I needed to go back to the doctor. So that, that had a lot to do with it and stress. It's not backwards to us. I know, but it's, Sarah, it's backwards to me. Like, look, I can't, I can't, how do I, okay. <laughs> I can't do this. Oh gosh, you got to laugh. Um, yes, yeah, stress. Definitely. I have my new, see now I'm backwards. I have my new candle here. Remember from Bath and Body Works? This is the Hanukkah one. It smells delicious. I'm getting hungry. Uh, take care of yourself. I'm, I'm trying now. I'm trying. I have all my tests ready to go, like the ultrasound of the heart and all that. That's all going to be taken care of now. I mean, I can't have nothing happen to me. I got kids, you know? So you know, I'm definitely taking care of myself. Hey, Darcy, how are you? Uh, you look fine. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's Jody. Hey, Jody. Uh, where is it? I don't have it. My friend Jody sent me a big box for Christmas. All of my favorite things. And I just got done putting on the um, lotion and stuff. My favorite uh, body butter. Love it. Love it. Is your injection covered under the new insurance? Um, I'm not back on the Ozempic, but if that's what you, so I don't know. Um, if, if that's what you're talking about, my insulin is covered. Yes, if that's what you're talking about. Um, if there's another injection I take, it's called Repatha, but that's for cholesterol. That's expen That's like $2,000, but that's just once a month. I don't know if that's going to be covered. Um, oh, BTU's in here. Hey, B. Terry. Hey, Terry. Um, I love this happy and I was having a shit day to all. Well, I'm, so, I'm glad you made it because it's, it's like what dinner time for you. Yeah. Ozempic. I could never remember. I don't know. I haven't went to that doctor yet. That's the doc, my, uh, endocrinologist. I have not went to her yet. So, um, it, it, she's so hard to get into. Like first they said I, I couldn't get into April. I'm like April. So now it's March, but I'm on the list like if somebody cancels. So that's going to be a minute. Oh, you you have anemia. So are you like, what do you have to take iron pills and stuff? Are you like tired? Um, hi, Lisa. I fixed my name. It was Nanya. <laughs> oh, you Nanya. Stevie. I didn't know that was you. Nanya, like Nanya business. Okay. Um, so let me put the link down so Lisa can come up. I guess I just tap it. I don't have my mouse. So let's say invite copy. Okay. Let's see. I'm trying to, you know, I'm left-handed. Oh, oh God. Oh no. Paste. Okay. I think I did it. And then I guess I just tap the screen. <laughs> We're learning. We're learning. Um, let's see. Oh, you did it. Yes. See, I got it. I got it. Um, hi, Maria. Doxing and assholes. So yeah, not, uh, we don't, do we want to talk about doxing? Do you know somebody just doxed my daughter? My innocent daughter. Okay. Cause you're mad with me. I don't care how old. I don't care if she was 40. I mean, She's not even on YouTube, but you know, God, God, God handles everything. Um, I am having a new medical issue too. I think I'm using up my warrant. Oh, stop it. Oh, Lisa, what happened to you? I was just getting ready to tap you. People are gross, but hey, uh, what, what you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? <laughs> oh, let me tell you a, 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 a story one time. Do you remember the, the uh, show um, Cops? Who remembers that where they would go like and and, and uh, that bad boy song? Who remembers that? Well, many years ago in the 90s, the one projects that I lived in. OK, hold on a second. Add to stage. I see you, Natalie. Let me say hi to Lisa real quick. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Anne. Hi, everybody. How are you guys doing today? Ooh, loud. Hold on. I got to turn this volume down. Am I loud? Well, it just could be my thing because I had the volume all the way up. Just it could be me. Um, so let me just say this real quick. And the one now they tore down that one project and they put like townhouses. But prior to that, yeah, we were on cops. And here's the thing: at that time, there was only one way in and one way out, <laughs> right? So 
Oh my God. Or no, no, I'm lying. There was one way in and a couple ways out. So people would get away. So then what they did was they made it one way in and one way out. But I remember watching and I'm like, I know that is not my apartment complex. Oh my God. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but they tore it down and now it's, it's townhouses and stuff. Very nice, actually. And it's kind of quiet. Am, am I, do I sound, Lisa, did I sound low? You sound low right now. Well, I don't know where the, where the hell is the, uh, where's the mic where I could talk? Wherever you're at over there, it sounds louder. Yeah, but then if I talk way over here, you can't see me. No, no I'm not saying stay over there, Anne. <laughs> Here, somebody comes on and I'm like, hello. Um, what I'm going to do is buy a mic. That's what I'm going to do. Because the mic I have, I don't think will fit. Uh, let me see. Will it fit in this? No, because this is an Android one. Yeah. So I, I have to buy a mic. And so I'm going to go on Amazon after this live stream. And uh, I'll get a mic. And then we won't have this issue anymore. I'm sorry if. If, if I'm going in and out, I apologize. You're not going in and out. You just get quiet when you move around. Uh, well, quieter. Uh, Dolphins girl, hello. So how you doing, Lisa? Miss Lisa? Well, I'm feeling a lot better. I've been under the weather, so I've been taking medication. I'm feeling better now, so I'm pretty good today, actually. Oh, good. That's good. I hate being sick. Oh, my gosh. I hate it. I'm like a baby. This year's just been wild because my husband had pneumonia over Christmas. Then, you know, the dog passed away and then I got sick. I mean, it's just been one thing after another. But, you know, what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. Amen to that. Congratulations on your divorce. Thank you. Thank you. Free I'm and ready to find a new man. Well, I'm not ready yet, but I... I won't feel bad, like if I flirt and stuff. Because before I, I, I was, oh my gosh, I'm so up. I gotta stop being nervous here. Like I feel like I'm up close and personal, but I can't see. So, um, you should be able to control your volume in Streamyard. Well, how do I do that? If you can tell me, I will do it. Let me know. Does anybody know? This is all a learning experience. Oh, your fiance have strep throat. I hate that. Uh, what was it, Lisa? Last year Isaiah had it, but remember he he was get. He had like bumps right here. Um, his his uh, lymph nodes were swollen. Yeah. And so they when he went to the emergency room, uh, they were going to check him for mono. But first they checked him for that. And he had a bad, really, really bad strep. I remember. I remember. You know, my kid has not been sick, although he's not a child. He's a grown man. But he hasn't been sick. He's got a great immune system. You know what? To be honest, I, yes, the divorce is official. I, I'm a single woman. Yes, I am. Um, I, I don't get sick too often, but when I get sick, I get sick, you know, but Lexi, ever since she had her heart and lung surgery a couple years ago, she gets bronchitis all the time. Like, well, she's all it, it probably took a hit on her immune system. Mm hmm. I hate that. And she always wears a mask and stuff, you know, especially like where she works and stuff. But she's always getting sick. And I hate that, you know. Absolutely. I'm really, you know, when my son was a baby, he was a preemie. He was only two pounds and 10 ounces. And now, you know, the first two, three years were a struggle. But he was healthy overall after that continually throughout. Hello. I hear you. Oh, you went out. You said he was healthy. What? I said he was born preemie. He was only two pounds and 10 ounces, but the first two or three years were rough with him. But after that, he has just been healthy, healthy, healthy. Uh, really quickly, Nala is on the floor. I know usually, well, you can't even see the bed. I don't like that. Let me see, um, watch me do something. I'm going to knock everything in my setup. I have you rigged. Let me see. Nala Poo Poo is not in the picture. <sighs> Nala. Hi, everybody in the chat. Hi, Janice. Hi, Beauty and More. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Lori. Hi, Darcy. Hi, Boo. Hi, Tina. You know, it drives me nuts not to say hi to you guys. Please hit that like button if you haven't. If you're not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. We'd love to have you back. <laughs> yeah, Nala Poo Poo's. Oh, look, I fixed, I fixed a little bit of it. Now I look real up close and personal. Um, what was I going to say? 
I was just we were say, talking about the health of our kids and people being oh, healthy. When Tyler was born, now I, so when, you know, I got pregnant, I didn't know I was diabetic at that time because I was 18. And so I had, at that time, I had uh, gestational diabetes. That's, that's what they thought. And so I dilated, and how I knew was I dilated at, at um, 20 weeks. And um, that's what, you know, because I guess what, they don't take the sugar test until you're like seven months. So they had no, they wouldn't have no idea, you know, and they were able to um, prolong it. They gave me breath and they gave me a shot and then a pill I had to take all the time. But then at seven months, uh, I was four and a half centimeters and they couldn't stop it. And, but because I was diabetic, all my kids were born with sugar in them, which they peed it out, but he was eight pounds, eight ounces at seven months. So they told me he would have been over 12 pounds, but that's what hurt him, Lisa, because they said, because he was so big, they rather him been a smaller weight. So anyway, my point is when you see him at the hospital, he was the biggest baby, you know, people were like, why is he here? Cause you know, you see like the little ones, but right. Um, he used to get sick a lot and thank God now he never gets sick. Like you wouldn't even know, just like with your son, you wouldn't even know he was born. Like looking at him, you wouldn't know he was born early. I only carried him 25 weeks. Um, it was just like, it was a blessing. I, uh, not that I carried him that short a time, but mm -hmm. my doctor, I'd went in my doctor and he said, you know, I want you to go over for a stress test at the hospital. And I said, okay. And I got over there and they were like, um, they were bringing more people into the room and I knew there was something wrong. I was young. I was only 21 mm -hmm. and they were like, we're going to have to take him now. And I said, what? And they were like, we're going to have to take it. I was there by myself because mm. it was just a stress test. I started calling my mom and at my, at that time, husband and everybody. And I was actually in surgery getting a cesarean before when my mom got there before and I seen her. And, but I guess my ex-husband got there after and I had an emergency cesarean right on the spot. I was in, in no way prepared whatsoever. Gosh, yeah, that's terrible. That that like when I first dilated at five months, I was at the time I was working at Walmart then, and I worked in the fitting room. And that's back then. We're going back what not ninety four, ninety. Uh, I had them in ninety five, but what I don't know. Yeah, 95. right. Five. And um, that's when, like, you would sit down at the fitting room and the fitting room would answer the phones and stuff. So we're going back many years ago. So because I was pregnant, I sat um, in the fitting room and I remember having cramps. And so I called the doctor. The doctor says, go there. And I remember I was all by myself. It, that's scary when you're by yourself and you don't know, like, what's going to happen. It is. It was very scary. I mean, I thought, what do you mean I'm going to have him now? <laughs> right. And actually, I thought it was a girl because the sonograms weren't like they were. So he had a nice pink room to come home to. <laughs> <laughs> they were like, it's a boy. And I was like, what? It's a what? <laughs> oh, my God. That's too funny. Do you, let me tell you a story with uh, my last one with Isaiah. So I had all my kids early, right? So they told me once I got to 36 weeks with Isaiah, if I, because I had always dilated but like they won't stop it. They'll let them go. But they want they don't want them to go at 36 weeks because they want the lungs and stuff developed, right? Yep. So me and my mom, we were at the lake where we go to. And me and my mom had this thing because I was really cramping and stuff. And I'm like, I just can't keep doing this. I, it, it was hurting. And so my mom was like, well, I'll just say, I mean, we have this plan. Okay. It, I, I was 36 weeks, right? So I was at the due date. But um you know, like, oh, we're going to say you're cramping and all this other type of stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. so we go, we go to the doctor. It was my regular doctor's appointment. And you know how they check you inside. And he was like, well, looks like you're going to have a baby today. And me and my mom looked at each other. And we're like, what today? I bet. Even though we had this plan, but we didn't think it was going to work. So we were like, what <laughs> <laughs> today? It you know, my, my son was tiny but he could breathe on his own from the first time he, he came into this world and they tried to put a ventilator on him and they were like, well, he doesn't need one. And he could turn his head back and forth. He was perfectly developed. Only he was born totally blind. Mm. Well, you know, God is good. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this today when I was listening to your vlog, mm -hmm. you know, everybody spent time with my son, my mom, me, my sister. I, sorry, go ahead. 
everybody. And my mom would go every morning first thing because they wouldn't let us sleep there back in that time. You know, it was one big room where the NICU was. It was a huge room and they wouldn't let nobody sleep there. You could sleep on the couch. That was it. And I had had a cesarean. So I was going, you know, four or five times a day and going home. Well, anyway, my mom would go first thing in the morning about 5.30 or 6 o'clock and she would sing to him and she would take her ring off and dangle it across his incubator. And she did it every day. And she called me one morning and said, he can see Lisa. And I said, what? She said, I've been dangling. She said, I didn't tell you. But I've been taking my ring and putting it on a chain. And he's moving his head with my ring. And I called everybody, all the doctors. And everybody said, well, that's not possible. We told you he's never going to see. He has a disease called nystagmus. And it's blood behind the eyes. And so everybody rushes to the hospital. You know, the doctors take him in. They're in there for a couple hours. And they came out and the doctor sat down. And I don't think he was a religious man. And he said, I'm going to tell you what. He said, he can see. He said, and only 1% of any people that have this disease ever see anything. He said, so I'm just going to say it must be prayer. You know, because I, a lot of doctors, they're more scientific. You know, that's like... Uh, you know. I literally still get chills when I tell that story because when a doctor looks at you and says, all I can say is it must be prayer. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I, I'm so glad that he can see guys like that. They told me he'd never walk. He would never talk. He would never see. He would never drive. He walks. He talks. He graduated from high school. He drives. He has a job. He makes good money. He is amazing. Mm -hmm. They were all wrong. You know, they wanted to let him pass, Ann. They wanted me to let him pass. And I said, oh, hell no. I said, I'll take care of him no matter what. But mm -hmm. God is so good. He he exceeded all their expectations. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought God, about that today. God can do anything. You just have to have your, you just have to keep your faith. That's what my grandmother, my great grandmother, my grandmother, my grandmother's last thing to me was. And always keep your faith. And it, no matter what it is, doesn't you have to be Christian or Catholic or even if you don't believe whatever, just keep your faith, whatever you believe in. Don't let anything that we go through change the way that you feel, you know, and it's so true. You just at the at. Do you remember when Lexi, when I went live, when Lexi had the um, blood? I talk? could never forget that. I could never forget that. Anne. And I remember I. I was shocked because when she went to the hospital, I'm thinking at that time they were just going to put like an IV to break up the blood clot that was like um, on her lung, you know, and didn't know she had any on her heart or anything. And I remember when they, they said it and I, they were like, they didn't even have time to prep her. You know, they just like took her to the um, elevator. Yeah. And I remember they, they were like, well, prep her in the OR. And so Lexi was like, mommy, I'm scared. And I said, Lexi, you keep your faith. I said, you believe in God, right? She said, yes. I said, well, then you keep your faith. You're going to be okay. She and said, I don't mean to interrupt you, but whatever you were doing right there, I can hear you perfectly well and much better. Wherever you were just doing, I could hear you way better. I'm sorry I, I, to interrupt. I'm just up in the attic, so it's going to come and go. But when they anyway, took her to the elevator, you told her to keep the faith. I know you did. And, and so I go into the bathroom and I can hear my grandmother and my grand, like her voice. Cause she had passed at the time. My mom was still alive, but my mom was dying. My mom died a month later, but I heard my grandmother in my ear say, ask for prayers, keep your faith. And do you remember I went live? You and called I, me and said, I'm going live for prayers right now. And I said, I'm there. I'll be there. Because I mean, that's, that's the only thing I could think of. Like as many people just pray, even if you don't pr believe in it, like send me good jujus, what have you. And I remember so many people were like, uh, sh she didn't look sad enough. And it's like, when you go through something like that, especially when it's your kid, you don't have time to sit there on the ground and fall and cry. You have to be strong for your child. Like I'm not You were in shock. And I remember seeing you, you were in total shock. And I remember after she got into the operating room, you were like, Lisa, you were like, honestly, I didn't even know what was happening. I just knew they were taking her. And you said it took me a little bit to even get my mind around the fact that they were going to open her up like that. Well, um, I remember I didn't I still didn't get it until the nurse said she's so young. And I looked and then I remember my ex-husband. Oh, God, that sounds so Woo my ex-husband says, Ann, do you realize what's happening? And I said, no. Because I was in such shock. He was like, you, she's getting open heart surgery. 
And I remember going to the bathroom and you know how I am about, you know how I am, right? I literally dropped to my knees on that dirty floor and I heard my grit and I just immediately went live, you know? Well, it was the best thing you could have done because the more prayers, the better. I mean, I remember asking people privately that hadn't been on your live to pray for, you know, I just kept saying, pray for Anne's daughter, pray for Anne's daughter. I was on my knees that whole day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know you don't have to be on your knees to pray, but my one of the last things my mom told me before she died was don't ever be ashamed to get down on your knees on the floor and talk to God. And me and her got down on our knees and prayed before she died. And I get on my knees when I'm in prayer a lot. I get on my knees, but you don't have to. You can be in your car. You can be anywhere. And like you said, it doesn't, isn't about religion. If you believe in a chair, well, pray to that chair, ask that chair to help us because that's what we need. Mm hmm. Hi, Christine. How are you? I see you, Veronica. Give me a second. <laughs> Hi, ladies. <laughs> Hi, Christine. Congrats, Anne. I'm so excited you're divorced. I know. Really quickly, <laughs> this is the first time I'm seeing a dog in your background. Oh, yes. Let's see. Which one do we have? Oh, that's um Duke. He's our Doberman. He passed away a year ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. Oh my gosh. I love like, well, I just love dogs. Okay. You and me both. <laughs> They're definitely my spirit animal. <laughs> so, so how are you doing today? We're talking about all of our giving birth stories. I'm good, Lisa. How are you? I'm I'm doing pretty good. I'm feeling a lot better. I'm hanging in there. Oh, I didn't know you were sick. I haven't been in the comments much, so I didn't know. <laughs> I've been poorly, but I'm better. I'm doing better. I've been taking antibiotics and I'm healing right up. So tell me about your birth story. I want to know. Well, let's see. So I've had three babies, mm -hmm. uh, two boys and a girl. So my oldest, he's about to be 32. So he was born um, completely blue. Uh, he was 10 pounds, six ounces. Um, oh. I didn't even see him when he was born. All I know is from what my mother told me. Um, he was blue when they took him, and I didn't see him for the first eight hours of his life. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, and I, I was in the same situation. My son, they, I didn't see him. I was in a cesarean. I could, they wouldn't let me see him until I could walk down there because at that time they were like, wow. well, that'll help you heal more if you just can get up and walk to the, I thought, really? They brought me pictures, but he was the tiniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Oh, I can only imagine how little. That's so early to be born. It is. Um, so yeah, he I mean he's he's nice, you know, he's six two, two hundred pounds, nice and healthy now. And he never had any health issues growing up. It was just uh think of like a lack of oxygen during birth and him being so big and you oh, know, boy. not to be blunt, but you know, they cut you from hole to hole when they're that big. <laughs> yes, they do. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, and then my second son, he actually came out face up with the cord around his neck. Uh, oh. Yeah, he hit my bones coming out, and he was all bruised in his face, and he was blue, too. I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> but he was only seven pounds, five ounces. Well, I mean, I don't know why that would happen, but thank goodness they're all okay. Yeah, and then my last one being my girls. Now, you figure... What do they say? Each labor is supposed to get a little easier or a little quicker and all that. That's a <laughs> bunch of bull. A bunch of bull. <laughs> it sure my is. My last child, she was my longest labor, my worst labor. Um, she's the only one I decided to get, um, uh, you know, the thing where they numb you. What is that called again? Oh, a shot in the back. I can't think of the name of it right now. What's it called? Oh, I can't either. My goodness. Epidural. Um, Epidural. epidural that's it that's terrible so yeah i decided to get the epidural with her so if anyone's done that they have you sit on the edge of the bed and you kind of have to hunch over and they tell you you know don't move and they give you the shot well they do all that and i lay back down and that position I don't know what it did, but it made my daughter move. And I literally gave birth within five minutes of that. And then I was numb for four hours after. <laughs> the epidural <laughs> didn't even have time to kick in. No. No. Nope. Uh, so basically all three of my kids were, you know, natural births. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. 
yeah. you know, I had a second child and I was in labor. She had passed away and oh. um, I was in labor for 36 hours. They would not give me a cesarean because they wanted me to heal. They thought that I would mourn less if I didn't have a cesarean. Back those days, they had some weird ideas. Yeah, because that doesn't even make sense. You went through all of that and didn't get to bring a baby home. That, that is tragic and horrible for any woman to go through. It, it was. And I was young. I was 23. And it was it was very hard, to say the least. I think I've told this before, but I, I didn't go home. I went to a crack dealer's house. I'd never done cocaine in my life. And I no. went to a crack house and because I seen all those people on crack and they didn't care about anything, not their kids, not anything. And I mm -hmm. thought that's how I want to feel. At that and point, I did that for about nine months. I can only imagine. I can only imagine. But then I pulled myself back together and I got sober and I've been sober for so long now, 34, 32 years and three months. Right. Oh hi, Veronica. God. I just want to say hi. I know you've been waiting backstage for a while. I got to. Hi, Veronica. Hi, hi Veronica. <laughs> I know you were trying to come up last time, but I'm glad yes. you called me up. How are you? I'm okay. How are you guys? I'm good. Really? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't have a birth story. I know I do. I don't have any kids. Oh, no kids. Oh, right? <laughs> no kids. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. but I have two fur babies, which is my two cats. I was just going to ask. Are amazing. <laughs> I would have a dog, though, but my condo doesn't let me. So oh. I have yeah. to have cats. But it's well, cats are just as good. I, I had yes. cats for years. I used to take in um, abandoned cats. And I had, at one point, I was like the cat lady. I had five and I had to like rehome one of them at one point. I was like, this is getting out of control. But I love yeah, cats. So you say that, yeah. we I have found them in the, in the dumpster. Sorry. I found them as babies in a dumpster. Oh, my oh, goodness. I have one of those as well. A kitten. Well, it's not a kitten anymore, but yep, from the dumpster. From the dumpster, yeah. And how can two people sister that? twins. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. It's disgusting. They do it a lot here in Florida. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. People are terrible here when it comes to any animal. Mm -hmm. People need to spay and neuter their pets and not well, bring more into this world. Go save a pet if you can. Yeah. I mean, uh -huh. it, that's a blessing. The saving a pet is a blessing. It is. Yeah. I agree. Well, I don't know if you guys have heard of... Years now. Bye, JR. <laughs> Um, uh, he's a big, uh, what is he? Oh, the sheriff. Uh, have any of you guys heard of Grady Judd? I haven't. No. Oh, all right. It's, he's, he's pretty well known. But anyways, um, in my county, it's Polk County. And we had, uh, I guess this was prior before I moved here, but there was a real big issue with, you know, a lot of stray, especially cats. Like mm -hmm. a real big there were colonies everywhere um and so there was this uh non-profit company and i can't remember the name of it but they had come in and started helping like the local sbca and all the you know the places like that start doing the tnr the trap and you know release and, and neuter and spay all these and yes our local sheriff decided that well, he hates cats. He, it's well known he hates cats. Anyways, he threw them out of the county and didn't allow them to do the work anymore. This just happened in the past like year and a half. So oh, it's right there. It, it, it makes no sense because it's even worse than when they were here and, and tried to help. So they are there are stray cats everywhere. And there's so many people that are trying to do the trap and release and get, you know, programs back in the county and to me, it makes no sense. I don't understand it. I don't. I. I don't want to understand it. I just. I feel our, human, our humane side society here has a program where if you take your animal there and pay a, a sliding fee, which is very cheap. I think for cats, it's like twenty dollars, and for dog, for male dogs, I think it's like fifty dollars, and for female dogs, it's a little bit more. But yeah. that makes it so much easier for people to spay and neuter. I mean, it's just, yeah. it's such a big problem in, in this country with animals on the street. I mean, humans too. I mean, we have a lot of unhomed yeah, people. So well, so I don't true. know about the States cause I'm in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. So oh, you're in Canada. Yeah, yeah. The vets are like really expensive. Like it's not even, 
it's not feasible for a lot of people. Oh. So when they go to the vet and then they get out and they throw them away. So because they oh. can't pay. If the vets it's would be horrible. a little bit less, maybe people would take care of their animals more. Well, yeah, that's yes, too bad. I mean, my cat went in one time and it cost me $450 for them to tell me that she's dehydrated. Oh, my wow. God. Yeah. Do you um, have anything like we have here in the U.S., like a care credit or anything like that? Because I, I know a lot of vets don't do payment plans, you know. But no. do, do you have anything like that? Uh, maybe like a pet like cat, insurance, like but insurance? it's not it's not feasible. Like it's expensive for nothing. I'm not even sure about cats. I know about dogs, but for cats, I'm not sure. But it's not. they don't take care of everything. It depends on what yeah. you're going in for that they're going to yeah. cover, even though you're paying like $40, $50 a month. Well, the almighty dollar is everything to a lot of people. I mean, it's 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 sad but true. I mean, even with doctors for humans, I mean, you know, it's just everything costs yeah. so much. Medications cost so much. You know, they say that, you know, m over half the people who are prescribed medications that they desperately need either take none or only half as much as they're supposed to because they cannot yeah. afford their prescriptions. Well, let me bring you up in a minute. Um, well, let me just say this. Why do you think there are so many people that uh, turn to street drugs and different things? Yeah. Because they can't yeah. afford their medicine, so they absolutely run, they go to street drugs. And then I've, everything has fentanyl in it, and this is why there's mm -hmm. all these overdoses. Right. Because it's true. It's sad. I've sad, had to do that true. often. I couldn't afford to fill a script, and I had to buy them off the street. That's sad. Mm -hmm. That's well, very I'm sure sad. It's different in U.S. for Canada. Obviously, it's different. We have Medicare, and I work, and I have a private insurance. But I'm type two, a type two diabetic, like Anne. So we have a lot of things in common, me and Anne. But mm. uh, I take insulin. I take two types of insulin. I take medication, and they don't even want to give me the free Libre to put on my arm. I have to pay two hundred dollars every fourteen days. My oh, insurance wow. doesn't cover it. The government doesn't want to give it to me, even though my doctor gave me a letter that I'm I'm I meet all the criteria and mm -hmm. you think I can afford two hundred dollars every two weeks? No, so I, have to, I have to do the insulin five times a day. Wow. Oh, me. Yeah, how about the insulin pump? Have they talked about the insulin pump? What's the insulin pump? So what that is a lot of times, I don't know how your AC want how, how your levels are um or anything like that, but a lot of times they'll put like a pump that way the insulin goes directly in you and stuff, like if your sugar's too high or what have you. That way you don't have to keep poking yourself like you, you do it five times a day. Oh. I don't know. They didn't tell me about that because I'm on mm -hmm. two different types of insulin. Well, so. are, are you like on the R and the N or are you on a pen? What, what type of insulin are you on? It's a pen. A pen. Two uh -huh. different types of pens. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know the names, but I'm on Trurapi and Traceba. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was interested. And then I have the pill, which is like the Janumet, you could say. Mm -hmm. Metformin mm -hmm. mixed metformin. with some. Yeah. I, I couldn't I take metformin because it used to make me so nauseous. I was on a thousand milligrams a day with that, with the insulin, but it just made me nauseous. I can't that's why that. they changed it to like yeah, a, that's a pretty common one. Have something else. Mm -hmm. So it's called Janumet. Yeah. Well, we have Medicare here and we have Medicaid. Medicare is for people that have reached the age of Social Security. And then we have Medicaid for people who make under a certain amount of money. <laughs> but, you know, you have to, you have to, it's very strict and it's very hard to get. I mean, if you make $1 more, they will kick you right off the plan. Oh my gosh. Hi, Tammy. How are you? Hi. Yeah, I got a lot of people that want to come up, so I'm just trying to... I just wanted to pop on, no, let you know, I'm going to celebrate your divorce with you because I am in my divorce outfit. <laughs> <laughs> look at you. <laughs> you look like you're single and ready to mingle. Yes. Yep. Yes, yes. Hi, everybody. But I just wanted Hi. to come in. You can't hear me? I can hear her. I can hear oh. Yeah, I can too. I'm sorry, I cussed. We can't oh, sorry. Uh oh. And there's something with you because we can all hear it. Yeah. Let me text her real quick. Yeah. Tell me you look beautiful. Well, thank you. I just and this is Ant's palette on the eye. So I can see. Oh, out, beautiful. <laughs> I'm gonna go out and raise some hell tonight because we've waited too long. And I'm sorry about the clothes. <laughs> no. I'll go off. 
and then you can hit your hit down at the bottom you might have hit your mute button down at the very bottom where your windows are there's a mute button here let me let me tell her on text i'll tell her maybe there maybe she hit the mute button can you still hear me yes okay maybe you hit the mute This is always a test run for us. <laughs> Hi, Jersey. I love your hair. It's so super cute. Thank you. Look at your phone. I wish I had a sign I could put up. Oh, that's cute. Love it. <laughs> okay, everybody in the chat. I don't know what's going on. I can't hear Ann, and I'm, I'm texting her again. So I'm gonna text her again. Just okay, give me Ann. one minute. Talk amongst yourself for a minute. You're in control. Can she hear me or no? No. She's in control of the live. She can leave and come back in. So it reloads. 